Do you want to beat the Slav defense as white? Are you looking for something new and exciting that will surprise your Slav opponent? Stay tuned, this video is for you. All right, so what we're doing today is we're going through a Slav variation that we recommend in the Chess Goals Classical 1D4 course. We recommend the Slav exchange followed by four bishop to g5. Very interesting looking move. It's kind of like a Trompowski. Um, the idea is as soon as the knight comes out to f6, we're going to snap it off. We're going to double black's pawns. And this game is played by Stockfish 14 with the white pieces against Stockfish 13 with the black pieces. So we're looking at a very high level game using our chess goals repertoire. So here white develops with bishop d3 and knight f3, very natural, and king's high castle. Queen d2, and rook f to c1. So look at what white's doing here. There's a bad bishop on d7, white has a knight for it. What white's going to do is try to rearrange the pieces and get these queen side pawns rolling. In long term, take advantage of the fact that that d7 bishop is a bad piece. So thinking in terms of imbalances here g3 helps secure this f4 square. Sometimes black will want to just throw that pawn up to help free the position. Bishop f1 followed by bishop to g2. So what this is doing is it's securing the king side for white. We see that rook on g8, ideas of f4. White's shoring up this king side position first and then going to play on the queen side. So here we see knight to a4, eyeing the c5 square, eyeing the b6 square. So already look what's happening to black. Let's say rook c8 is played. Knight c5 is a great move. Starting to target these pawns. b4 is coming up next. So what black plays here is bishop to e8. Sort of in preparation for knight to c5. Um, if knight c5 right away, black could maybe react with moving uh, the pawns. Like here I'm seeing a5. This can't happen because queen takes knight. All right, so bishop to e8 is a nice way to prepare for knight to c5, but it also separates these rooks. So black is already looking just slightly uncoordinated, and if we look at the eval by stockfish 14, white's up half a pawn. So white plays a3, trying to get the queen side pawns rolling. f6, there's an idea here for black. Maybe black will play knight takes d4, followed by an attack. Um, let's give white a bad move just to show that. Knight takes d4. If e takes d4, this knight hangs. Nice little tactic. And if queen takes d4, guarding the knight, there's now rook to g4, cutting across the board. So a little tactical shot there by black, um, but white of course spots it because this is stockfish. Knight to h4. And now here, white's maneuvering this bishop again back to f1. So realizing the potential attack over here on the queen side and not afraid of uh, black's king side attack. So now white plays b4 followed by knight to c5. And look at these pawns rolling. So this is pretty simple chess by white. White's playing very solid. Number one, watching for threats by black. And then number two, looking to increase the advantages that white already has in the position. So white's now going for this queenside play. That's where white has the advantage. Knight f7, knight d3. And now finally b5 comes through. Black is going for a little bit of kingside play. And there's a little, I mean, these are high rated engines. There's a little bit of jockeying for position. But look at what white's doing here. Knight to c5, finally trying to break through on the queen side. Bishop d3, we have a threat alert here, there could be a sacrifice. So king to f7 is played. Bishop to b5. Now there's a new threat, knight takes b7. So when you have the initiative, always kind of look for these threats. Look to not only improve your the placement of your pieces, but look for tactical shots along the way. This is a cool idea, bishop to b5. Threatening knight takes b7. And now the bishop comes out to a4, and there's a new idea for white. White wants to actually force the issue, force that rook back to a8, and then take on b7. So watch this maneuvering by white. Queen c3, hitting the rook. Now knight takes b7. 
You might be asking yourself, well, could black have avoided that after bishop a4? I don't see any great way to avoid this. Because how else can black guard this b-pawn and where else can the rook go? The rook goes back right away, the tactic works. So black was already falling for this tactic. Um, and when I say falling for this tactic, it's still like a one point something advantage, 1.1. 1 .1. You know, it's not winning yet for white, but it's definitely uh, trending in that direction. And now we see here, Stockfish really knows how to convert a winning position. Queen c7 offers the queen trade. Black does not take it. And now white starts getting very annoying with this knight. And uh, transitions this from what could have been a queenless endgame to a pretty big attack. Now the b-pawn starts going up the board. Black king is running. f takes g, f takes g, e4. So remember the game that we just saw, the King's Indian defense game that was in the last video? Look at these pawn breaks by white. So in this position, if white doesn't play f3, it's really hard to press for the advantage. Everything is just a little bit tied down for white. But white's had this idea all along. Let's go f3, e4, break open the position knowing that we can attack the white king. So f3, king h6 is played because if bishop goes back, Knight to d8. What a move. Hey, what if rook takes? Wins the rook. And again, similar to the King's Indian game, look at how white's using a passed pawn to win the game. So this is something also to keep in mind. White's down a piece here for that pawn. But the pawn is so strong that that's actually winning the game for white. So let's go back to the game line. King to h6, f takes g, f takes g, e4. Okay, black plays d takes e4, king h1. Uh, d5 is also interesting here right away. Trying to open up this f5 square for maybe the knight or the queen. But king h1 was played, e3. So now black has a pass pawn of their own. Knight to d8. So again, black doesn't want to take the queen, but now this rook is actually hanging. So look at that transition by white. Previously, this pawn was on d5, guarding the rook. But now the rook is hanging. So after queen d7, white wins the exchange and then parks their extra rook behind the pass pawn. After a little bit of maneuvering, white offers a queen trade and wins the dangerous e-pawn, followed by the g-pawn with check. Make sure there's no checkmate for black. And this is still safe because anywhere this knight moves, we have queen takes queen. After a little bit of maneuvering, um, white transitions to this position. White is only up a pawn, but the issue is this pawn is so dangerous and the knight plus queen can really do a good job attacking the black king, whereas the bishop on b8 really isn't participating at all in the game. All it's doing is blocking the b-pawn. So this is another nice example by Stockfish where Stockfish is saying, I have the advantage of this past b-pawn on the queen side, but I'm actually going to also play for an advantage on the king side. So multiple advantages, multiple threats, looking for ways to keep transitioning the imbalances to make the game easier to win. That's another. That's the example we're seeing here from Stockfish 14. Like it's playing its younger brother, version 13, which is a beast, and it's picking apart Stockfish 13 with what started to be a very small advantage in, ex in an exchange slav. Very nice game so far. h4 takes, takes, queen g7, queen c2, and white finally gets the queen. 
and after queen takes b8, black resigns. It's a plus six advantage for white. So this came out of a Slav exchange, d4, d5, c4, c6, takes, takes, bishop g5, chess goals repertoire. I will put a card up above with a link to our playlist, Classical D4. Links in the description below if you're interested in the course. We have a full Classical D4 video course. One of the chapters is completely free to watch. Um, each chapter is a little over an hour, I want to say, in terms of video length. And we also have other links below to join Chess Goals. Uh, come visit our blog, check that out. And then make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. So we have a goal of 1,000 subs by the end of the year. Hopefully we can get there. Uh, so please give us a thumbs up. Comment below what you think of this video, what do you think of this Slav exchange line, and make sure to subscribe to the channel. All right, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.